name is Ray Khan, and today I'm going to do a sharing in terms of the BCA Green Mark 2021. And this uh, design, um, this technical sharing is uh, actually designed for the topic of sustainability and efficiency design for buildings. So targeted for consultant. So over in here is just a general sharing in terms of uh, Schneider Electric uh, ability in terms to provide energy and automations and digital solutions for efficiency and sustainability. On the right in here is a well-balanced uh, global presence uh, that has been sh showcased uh, in different parts of the world. And um, over in here, you can see that uh, the statistics that is taken in the year 2020, that um, our revenue are well-balanced uh, across uh, the different parts of the world itself, like Asia Pacific contribute about 30%, um, Western Europe 26, North America 29, and the rest of the world uh, 15%. So what it does here is that we showcase the local of global companies where Schneider Electric empower our staff uh, to ensure that we have a business operation that's well synchronized um, to, to be with our customers. And also uh, what it does is that we strive towards a match proximity to you, to our clients, to enable us to better understand and anticipate uh, with agility to support you uh, in your design work, also in business continuity. Now um, on the left in here, talk about some of the key figures also taken from the year 2020 is that 5% um, of the revenue is devoted uh, into uh, research and development and 41% of our revenues are coming from new economies. All right, so from the left lower, the showcase about the, our staff presently uh, is approximately around 128,500. The employees are deployed all over uh, 100 over countries itself. And our uh, executive management team is strategically uh, placed in uh, geographical hubs closer to our customers. And we are serving um, our customers in four uh, key growing end markets. They are buildings, uh, data centers, the infrastructures, and also industry itself. Here is a quick glance uh, in terms of the Singapore plan for the year um, by 2030, what are our aims and what are our ambitions. The, um, is that in terms of energy reset, uh, we have an uh, aim of 80% of the new development in here in Singapore to be for the buildings to be super low energy, we call it SLE. 80% um, of the improvement of the uh, energy efficiency um, over the baseline uh, starting of uh, 2005 itself. The next is in terms of uh, having a sustainable living uh, green plan in Singapore by the year 2030. So there's an aim for reduction of the net carbon emissions uh, from various uh, structures, various buildings itself. Uh, to develop a greener economy. So the aim of this is to help enterprise, especially the SMEs, to embrace uh, sustainability and develop capabilities in this area. So uh, one of the good examples in here is that uh, here in Singapore, we have the Jurong Island and we have the sustainable energy and chemical parks uh, is one of the examples. Um, next is that in some for resilience for the future is to produce 30% of our nutritional needs locally here in Singapore uh, in this sustainable program. I think one of the areas to develop is in the area of uh, urban farming. Presence of Schneider Electric in uh, Singapore of 47 years. Number of employees we have is 1,400. And in um, Singapore is the East Asia Japan hub that uh, covers the region in, in this sector. So here's our mission. Our mission for Schneider Electric is to be your digital partner for sustainability and efficiency. The main challenge of our generation today is probably the climatic change. Uh, but there are some good news. Uh, we are the generation that come to know about it, and we are the generation uh, probably could be the only one generation that can change this uh, trajectory, carbon emissions, and therefore uh, 
make certain improvement in this climatic change itself. Here talks about uh, some of the sustainability legacy of Schneider, uh, our effort. Uh, it's things started uh, all the way back from the last 15 years. The, we have um, developed the sustainability uh, barometers to track our report, our sustain sustainability initiative. Um, now we call it the SSI. So SSI is uh, Schneider Sustainability Impact, uh, but this um, the program is constantly evolving. This program drives our actions and impact on the environment, um, the economies, and also the society. The content of our sustainable uh, program, the progress on, on our impact, which undergo changes um, made by the auditors. Um, also, there'll be impacts coming from the governance boards. Um, also, we take into surveys and understanding from customers, investors as well. So we're constantly on the lookout to see how we can make changes which affect our KPIs. The key aim, the key goal in here is to make the best practice uh, that drives sustainability uh, in Singapore. So over in here is that um, in Schneider, we have the best in class strategy in place. Uh, we follow the three step approach from the strategy setting to execution to delivering the result. So, as you can see, the first um, strategy in here, uh, which is called Strategize, they involve a lot into consulting and advisory service. So, we understand the scale the, with the customers and we measured. Uh, in terms of their requirements, their enterprise requirements, their baseline requirements. So through the discussion with our clients at a very early initial stage. The next is that we also um, help our clients to create the decarbonization roadmaps so that um, throughout along the years, we ensure we set a benchmark for them to, to ensure that they actually meet those goals and targets. Next is that uh, we come up with um, structured program and governance that meets the local sustainability requirements. And also, last of all, we are constantly giving feedbacks to our clients on the economical changes, the current changes in um, the green requirements itself. So um, this is part of the strategy approach uh, that we do for this uh, digital and climatic actions. Now. Once strategies, uh, uh, fundamentals is done, next is that we go into the second step where we digitize. So in this uh, digitize, or we call it the digitization, um, it falls a lot into the services and the platforms of um, making information um, into uh, as available. So once digitization approach come in play, the um, example is uh, Schneider, we have a package called the Resource Advisor. Um, we are able to enable our client to monitor, to monitor their resources, to monitor their the emissions, and we study the track records that are based on the past trends, and um, we see how we can make things better. We then identify from those records where are the areas that we can create savings for our clients. So we look into hotspots, we look into opportunities in these areas, and also in terms of our reports, the, um, we create benchmarks for them, and also regular updates to communicate back with our investors, with our clients, the, um, what is the current performance once the, um, the, the strategy and this digitization approach come in. Moving next is that uh, we go on the third pillar approach, which is decarbonization. So decarbonization, the eco-structures, the Schneider context, we have eco-structures and also um, eco-experts network, technology in place to help in the efforts uh, of example, electrific electrifications, um, using example of smart grids, uh, or um, even green premium products, and services for circularity. Uh, we go into areas um, to reduce the energy the usage. We find alternative to replace energy sources. We go into 
um, the engagement of the value chain as well to see how we can improve um, those uh, existing um, situations. So this is the three uh, step approach for strategize, digitize, and decarbonizations, which is our strategy for climatic actions and digital transformation. Overall in here is that we take actions on the decarbonization strategies through our practical uh, decarbonization uh, levers to provide uh, electric electrifications in operations uh, via improvement or levers such as mobility, uh, industrial building processes and microgrids. The once uh, we actually electrified the process, the, we can get it in digital and we can get those uh, purposeful insights and develop and take actions on those areas. Uh, once we have the insight, we can also um, get human interventions the, into the pictures. All right, so uh, also areas where artificial in, uh, intelligence are coming to play in these areas where there are certain algorithms, all right? And moving next is into the areas of the um, reduction. So the reduction key aim is to reduce uh, energy usage in here um, using improvement levers such as um, digitization, um, ways on improving efficiencies. We look into ways on how we can optimize through optimizations. So we work with our client um, with our reduction ideas. We will showcase to you the different uh, reduction uh, business cases. So the project reference that we have done then also we help to create this uh, decarbonization uh, roadmap together with you. Um, we will advise some of the key steps to, to take in certain uh, given time frame, certain even uh, milestones, so that we can show, so that you can show to the boards of directors that uh, on the direction that we are heading. And um, also ultimately, uh, what is the goal that we hope to achieve in the long run itself. Um, next is to go into this third pillars, which is on replacement. So replacement, we are talking about replacing the energy source. So we can tap into levers such as uh, integrated sourcing, uh, renewable um, energy, and also carbon credits. So these are the different steps, the different approach that we can work on to actually uh, have the replacement for energy source, which is highly um, uh, effective, especially for clients who want to go towards the direction of super low energy building. And third, um, lastly, is that we engage um, to the level of uh, value change. So we understand the value change. We see how the, we can decarbonize in terms of supply chain to the, um, improve the circularity, the, improve the um, sustainable design, and we also look into ways uh, in details on the value chain, uh, what can be improved uh, in terms of uh, sustainability perspective. Um, also we'll try to identify certain hotspots. And once hotspots has been identified, um, we look into areas to see how we can resolve, how we can uh, perform reductions in those areas as well. All right, so the key aim uh, is the, into the whole the decarbonization go uh, towards the direction of zero carbon in here. Moving next here is uh, eco-structural architecture. So as I've uh, shared earlier, the four uh, key markets that the, in our the eco-structural architectures, uh, these four key pillars, like uh, buildings, data centers, uh, industries, and also infrastructure, uh, allow me to walk you through layer by layer. So at the bottom layer, we're talking about the, the focus in here is about connected products. So example, sensors, um, equipment nowadays are getting smarter with IoT technologies. So the, the actuators, the switch gears, the um, air circuit breakers, so all these are able to furnish us a very detailed information. So, but um, having the information, if you don't, if not able to react on it, um, the, the, you will not get the, the best in class operation in place. And that is why 
Now, with all these data, we are able to move into the next layer, which is called the edge control layers. So the edge control layers in here is that we can also do controls, we can do monitoring uh, over all this data. We can also do uh, remote viewing as well. So it can be a unified uh, operation platform, like a command center, where we can see into all the health data, all the situations of the different components, uh, especially uh, when we have all the sensors that's been deployed within the building itself. So we are able to uh, do reaction-based approach, which means that based on alarms, based on alerts, uh, we are able to take certain actions on it from the um, unified operations. Now, moving next is that uh, going into the apps and analytics services. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest change uh, in here for the past uh, five years is that where we have the full portfolio of software apps, analytics, uh, artificial intelligence that comes into this layer. So um, this layer have a variety of um, ways and approach to analyze the data. And not only they give you a reactive approach, they give you a preventive approach. What it does is that it tells you ahead of time before your equipment fails, what is likely to happen, and they also have a certain intelligence in there because there's artificial intelligence, the algorithms that can actually do certain calculations to help you to deep dive into areas where could be the potential fault uh, of um, the, the root cause of the problem. So this will help to reduce um, investigation time, troubleshooting time. So in a way, it's beneficial in terms of, of um, the economical the perspective as well. On the left in here, you can see uh, uh, there's a backbone of cybersecurity. So the, um, the cybersecurity protections applies not only just on the cloud layer, but in Schneider, we have the cybersecurity protections uh, on the on-premise uh, equipment as well. So it's a three-layer approach of protections uh, for the cybersecurity um, approach. Well, moving last is that the, um, all this information uh, is able to be um, analyzed um, on-premise, albeit on the cloud premise. So we have the flexibility in there. And at the bottom is that we have the different um, advisor package. We have a service bureau sitting in different parts of the world analyzing your data. So we give specific um, um, analytics, um, advisory, depending on the different modules that is suitable for your projects. We have infrastructure building advisors, powers, IT, which is uh, highly suitable for data centers, plant and machineries, uh, highly suitable for manufacturing facilities, and also for grids, uh, for uh, microgrids applications. Um, this also will be one of the uh, preferred offer. So also in here is that um, to actually have a truly sustainable, a resilient, hyper-efficient, and a people-centric building itself um, is all about how we actually digitize the life cycle of the building, uh, connecting all the different phases uh, into digitization from the design phase to the build phase and all the way to the operate and uh, maintained phase. The, um, in this top anal uh, analytic layer, so we have a wide array of digital offers. We have a very popular uh, ETAP, um, electrical calculation softwares. We have a beam modeling software, which is called RIB. We have an integrated workplace management softwares. So um, all these different softwares are able to enable our client to capture and leverage the data in all different stages, be it from design, from build, all the way to operate and maintenance. Uh, it also helps to optimize their capex uh, for the entire building uh, life cycle. Over in here, is just, we can see on the left is a photo of our um, Schneider Electric Building, uh, which is the uh, East Asia Japan Headquarter. And we have a name for this building called the Kalang Paust. Now, this building showcases a real life example of how we have succeeded in optimizing the, the energy and 
um, efficiency process, uh, we took the ambitious goal in actually retrofitting this 25-year-old building and turning it into our building of the future uh, using Schneider's very old uh, eco structure solution. Now, this building has won the um, Greenmark Platinum Award in Singapore. Um, it's the first office in, in Singapore to be certified under this new guideline. Uh, this building has a um, nine story building that covers a gross floor area of uh, 18,500 um, square meters and it houses uh, approximately around 1,250 employees. So there's a few uh, goals in here is to go towards the direction of 100% carbon neutrality and um, also have uh, a good uh, improvement in terms of the operational efficiency um, and also uh, using the renewable energy uh, within these facilities to help us to go towards the key goal of um, super low energy building. Um, for this building itself, we have quite a lot of uh, sensors that's been uh, connected. All in all, total, we have about 5,000 over um, sensors and connected products that span across these entire buildings. Um, the sensors a lot uh, and um, device are mostly for monitoring or data analytics. A good example of them are like the CCTVs, the card access, the power tags, the workplace sensors. Um, not only this is that we connect, well, we collect uh, mechanical uh, information as well such as BTUs, uh, water meters, uh, the, the issues, the chiller plants, and all these data is exchanged uh, via this BCA portal through the web service. The, um, over in here is that uh, the data are collected using uh, these uh, connected products uh, sent into the middle layer where we call the edge control layer. So over in here, we deploy, we, we do a monitoring of the platform, uh, such as our uh, EPMS and also BMS. Um, we also with additional uh, package for monitoring like the security expert and also the facility expert. Now um, in the center uh, on the cloud-based analytics has been deployed into this building as well. So we have uh, deployed different advisors and analytics solutions that come into play. Um, these are our solutions to help improve the occupants' uh, satisfactions, to improve the productivities for the full range of our buildings by using um, the advisors modules like the building advisors, uh, workplace advisors, power advisors, and etc. And uh, in terms of the renovations, we have made a few key changes uh, in this um, 25 year old building as well. Um, at the top, we have done certain renovations at the rooftop. We have uh, deployed solar panels at the rooftop. Over in here is a picture. So the, with the solar panel, we are able to supply 47% of the building energy the, um, consumption. So the building currently runs on 100% renewable the solar energy in the daytime. Uh, also, what it does is that um, on the uh, level one itself, we have also solar energy uh, technologies that actually been uh, in place. Of course, the, with the contribution to the um, strive towards super low energy, the, we have instead of offsite um, solar energy as well that contribute to a certain percentage of this uh, building uh, energy consumption. Um, apart from this, they have made uh, certain um, upgrades, like even for the window panels. Window panels have been replaced with bigger window panels to allow, allow more light into the building. So the design has uh, changed, uh, the appearance have changed as well. So with more lights uh, into the buildings, the design meets the envelope thermal transfer value, ETTV, and this also helps to enhance the energy performance. Um, also, the, in terms of the issue, we have made certain improvements on the chillers. 
So the chillers is that we have installed the magnetic bearings for the chillers uh, armed together with a high technology variable speed drives. Um, the installed chillers uh, act here as a centralized uh, cooling system for the entire building, uh, providing a portion of the air conditioning uh, by HVAC systems. So the purpose of the magnetic bearing chillers uh, armed together with the variable speed drive helps to regulate the speed according to the building's demand. So this helps to achieve a higher rate of efficiency. The, um, the chiller plant sends the data um, in real time back into the portal for BCA in just a matter of, um, it's a matter of seconds. So it's more like a real time approach where we have a real time monitoring in place uh, in our command center. And uh, all this comes together for the performance uh, report as well. So where the BCA can actually uh, provide to the building owners by logging into, for example, the chiller efficiency smart portal. The, um, here we can compare the chiller plant performance across even multiple buildings. Right? So the, in this way, we can also identify which are the underperforming buildings and which building needs to be further uh, worked on and improved. The, um, apart from this is that we have the integrated um, real-time data, uh, IBMS as well. So these are uh, real-time data in the IBMS um, section that comprises of BMS that collects uh, information such as um, weather forecast, weather forecast data. Uh, you give advanced uh, forecastings, um, especially on the solar energy generation. So this also help to increase our uh, energy efficiency. For example, on a very hot day, um, the pump will regulate the pumping of the variable speed drive um, more actively compared on a colder day, a rainy day. So if it's more on the cooler weather, the chiller pumps uh, will be set, and we can set it to a lower speed to regulate the temperature. So this will actually help to place the building consumption to the optimum level. Um, by optimizing the usage of the electrical equipment, um, another benefit is that you actually benefit the lifespans of all your equipment. Um, one of the beauty in here is that our command center, our BMS is linked to the meteorological weather forecast. And this in a way helps uh, certain um, smartness in terms of energy efficiency and also enable uh, a better performance on this building itself. Okay, so um, moving next is that um, we have renewable energy usage on the ground floor. So on um, solar panels uh, that has been uh, installed at the car park level and also the uh, garden areas. So producing a certain percentage of the building loads uh, that is a, a showcase in terms of the uh, renewable energy that we can supply back into the building. And also we have the electric vehicle stations that are in place for our service fleet um, for the, the EV vehicles. And we also have the VESS, which is the battery energy storage systems, uh, where we can store solar energy during the daytime and we can use it in the nighttime. Okay, so here talks about some of the key pillars in here. Um, in terms of uh, resiliency, the key focus in here is to have a quick recovery system in terms of bound backs um, through the analytics of um, uh, through mechanical faults. So where our BMS is connected to the infrastructure building advisors, where we have a quick dashboard to analyze the root cause uh, of certain issues. And we also can prioritize the work stream based on energy or based on comfort or maintainability, where the user can actually do their selections, which is the work stream that they want to prioritize on. And apart from this, uh, we have the condition based uh, uh, monitoring and also on the, especially on the critical electrical asset. So where the building is implemented, it's connected to the ACBs, the circuit breakers, the allow parameters such as uh, breaker aging, uh, to be viewed, to, to be monitored. The electrical panels are connected to the um, asset devices that helps uh, with the condition-based uh, maintenance and critical assets uh, monitoring. 
uh, which give a remote 24-7 a few bus bureau access and the um, service bureau is actually based in France as well. Now moving next is into this uh, people-centric. So people-centric is designed for the responsiveness uh, of the building towards the occupants. So uh, we have a uh, sensors that's based in place like the carbon dioxide sensors, the VO2 sensors, temperature, temperature, humidity, uh, light sensor, which is called the light sensors, the sound sensors. So we, go, we can actually do a deep dive into the comfort level of every floors um, that focus on the uh, occupants, which is the employees in this building. We have a real-time dashboard for heat maps, for scoring systems, and also what it does is that we can manage easily the office space, especially during this COVID pandemic. Uh, we can do zonings, we can do people counting, and we also can do uh, analyzation in terms of the safe distancing approach. Next is uh, in terms of the next pillar. The next pillar is on the sustainable pillow where this building has been energized by on-site renewable and also off-site renewable. So the building currently runs on 100% renewable energy, um, the source from our solar panel, and also accompanied by the off-site solar energy. All right. So um, as I've mentioned earlier, with the technology of passive energy reductions, we use the magnetic bearing chillers with variable speed drive where we regulate um, the uh, performance of the chillers, so to improve the efficiency. And also we have done certain building packet uh, refurbishments for the ET ETTV values to enhance the energy performance by letting more lights into the building itself. And also uh, active en energy management systems that's been in place that connected to, for example, lighting, HVAC, or microgrid, battery systems, your building devices. The last pillar in here talk about hyper-efficiency. So hyper-efficiencies, we talk about the, um, the seamless control by end-to-end -end digital platform. So the integrated power and building management system, so if a unified the monitoring systems, uh, like a command centers that's connected to the building lightings, your security cameras, your security access, your leaf, your fish facts. Um, it's all connected to the different people sensors uh, in the different floors of the workplace to monitor the health and uh, also the um, environmental level of every individual office or floors. The, um, the connected um, smart electrical panels are also in place in every floors and every buildings. We have the smart breakers, the meters, the thermal sensors that's been implemented. For facility management, we have the building advisors that's been connected to further provide um, expert explanations on the root cause or recommended actions in the event of failures. We have uh, modules like the EcoStructure Power Asset Advisors to help this building to stay resilient to electrical failures. And also we have the facility management software to manage incidents and assets or automate the workflow to engage external vendors and contractors, and also armed with the digital twin technologies. So to connect to, that's connected to the BMS to do energy modeling based on occupancy rate and operational um, profiles. So here is the transformation uh, of this building called Kalang Pals in the journey of sustainability, um, resiliencies, hyper-efficiencies, and also the focus on the occupants. And from the outcomes, here are three outcomes that we look into. Um, one of the outcomes is that we've aimed for 45% reduction of the energy consumption. So we have redesigned the building to be people-centric, to stay resilient by utilizing the technology and engineering solutions, and also a proactive uh, eco-structural approach for, to provide analytic based service and also optimize the energy performance and create a hyper-efficient building. The second outcome from this is that uh, we have 
the one um, a good performance in terms of 1,253 tons of uh, carbon emissions that's uh, through the reductions of uh, carbon emissions uh, by removing the vehicles on the roadways and also increasing the sustainable buildings uh, in here and also having 100% um, solar power um, during the day operations and also having the um, approach, the initiative to reduce the carbon footprint with solar blended power supplies and also advisors, which is called our microgrid advisors. And also outcome three is that we have gotten the outcomes of um, getting the award from Greenmark for Platinum. Uh, we have been awarded the leadership for sustainable uh, leadership in um, sustainability and uh, performance by SGBC. And last of all is that we have increased our brand recognition and improved our corporate social responsibility in this area. All right, so with this, I've come to, um, to an end for the first part of my presentation. In my second presentation, we will start to dive into the topic of Greenmark. Thank you. Thank you.